Hello everyone, this is Mr. Honey, and today we're going to be going through different types of windows. And we'll have your window assignment for today. So what I'm going to need you to do is you're going to go ahead and download the file template that goes along with this video, fill it in, send it back to me after watching the video, and you will get your 100 quiz grade for the day. So let's get started. So the first window on our list is the fixed or picture window, which means it's just there. If you think about the windows in my classroom, those windows are fixed or picture windows. They do not open. There's no ventilation. Um, they don't really have a lot of window treatment, which basically means blinds, curtains, that sort of stuff. Um, they tend to create a portrait-like space on your wall, and they create stunning walls of light and view and can be used in combination with operating windows as well as patio doors. So, once again, these windows don't really do a whole lot. They're just there, and they're cool to look at, and you don't really need a whole lot around them. Next, we have sliding or gliding windows. These are opening by sliding one sash horizontally past the other. So as you go, you would slide the window uh, left or right and would slide that past. So this is ideal for spaces that are next to walkways and other traffic and other bleh, traffic areas since they do not project outward. If you think about it, if you have a window that you know opens up like as in it actually swings open and someone's walking by, you might clothesline somebody. But if you have a nice sliding or gliding window, then uh, they don't have to worry about that. And then once again, placement is higher on the walls is preferred, especially in homes with children, because you don't want your children getting up there and trying to move said window. Next, we have double or single hung windows, which means that they open vertically with the sash that slides up and down. So as you said, we have the sash of the window that was sliding or gliding that goes left and right. Single or double hung will actually go up and down. And this actually provides um, a measure of safety in rooms with children because if you think about it, um, you know, children may not be able to push that area up or pull that area down. And then on top of that, if you think about it, a lot of these come with locking mechanisms that um, are very hard for children to reach and manipulate. So, once again, this is a um, very, um, <clears throat> very good type of window. All right, next we have what's called the casement window, which they crank open for unobstructed views. And this is a top to bottom or a side to side. So if you think about the old uh, windows we used to have at Northwestern, they could sit there and they could crank open a little bit. Um, you know, those are essentially what casement windows are. They tend to open fully and they catch breeze and direct the flow of fresh air into the home. And then, like I said, when it cranks it open, um, it's good because that helps operate it over a sink or, um, you know, in <clears throat> or any sort of appliance. So if you think about the sash window <clears throat> or the correction, the double, the double or single hung window that we just talked about, if you have to reach over and then you have to unhook the locks and then you have to push it up. As you lean forward, your ability to get under that window and push it up is going to be severely uh, diminished. So that's where the casement window comes in because it is easier just to lean over and then crank um, with your hand and wrist motion rather than try to reach over and just push that window up. So this is why the casement windows go really well over uh, sinks and appliances. So next we have the awning window. And now this is good for rain or shine because typically they open from the bottom and they allow <clears throat> they um they allow for ventilation to come in. So they open from the bottom and they can, you know, allow for rain <clears throat> they can allow for rain to, you know, not come into your home even with the window open. And then oftentimes what happens is, you know, if you've got children, um, you know, they, correction, not if you have children, but um, once again, if opening, once again, requires a reach, such as over a kitchen sink or a counter, uh, windows are typically easy to operate, just as a casement. And then they're often combined or joined with other window styles. So you may see them near picture windows. You may see them with other types of windows. Next, we have the hopper, which is the inverted awning windows. So it's different. So these awning windows are open from the top and are placed low on the wall. So typically, you'll see them in basements and things of that nature. 
So they're great for ventilation. So once again, basements and bathrooms. Um, also used to mean on his transoms, but the angle of the window helps block dirt, leaves, um, and other debris from blowing into the house. However, it is very hard to install covering and can oftentimes make privacy an issue. Oftentimes you cannot really use it in the event that you have um, rain and things of that nature because, you know, as you can see, rain could come right into your house. Next, we have what's called the center pivot, which is amazing for air circulation. But the big thing is that any sort of covering or treatment must be able to clear the window when open. As you can see, it opens and then it juts out from the left. It also juts out from the right. So as you see with it jutting out the way it is, you want to make sure that any sort of covering or treatment um, is good for that uh, and allows for the center pivot to do what it needs to do it is in the center. Next we have the bay window and they are specifically designed windows that create a niche in the home that's filled with light. It's typically they highlight a stunning view such as an ocean or a sweeping meadow where they are often designed with window seats so that people can sit in the windows and enjoy a book or a look outside. So as you see typically if you think of the bay windows they've got that sort of um, trifold look about them. Then we have the bow window. All right, so the bow window is a variation of the bay window, but it has its name because it has a slightly more curved shape instead of the angle shape of the bay window. So if you think about the O in bow, O is curve. It's like, you know, a curvy O. And then if you think of bay, the A in bay is angular. So and then it also, once again, looks like the curve of a drawn bow. Looks very, very similar to the bay window. Now, another thing we need to talk about is energy efficiency. Um, once again, there have been plenty of um, <clears throat> initiatives put in place by the government that's going to move forward to installing energy efficient windows and making homes more energy efficient. We have what's called the Energy Star, which is, once again, a government-backed symbol for energy efficiency designed to save money and protect the environment through energy-efficient products and practices. And essentially, this was created to reduce the ga greenhouse uh, gas em emissions and other pollutants caused by inefficient use of energy, and then make it easy for consumers to identify and purchase er, energy-efficient products that offer savings on energy bills. And in some cases, there have been um, federal government programs that, you know, have allowed for people to have um, these types of windows installed into their homes. So once again, we have the Energy Star rating um, basically says that if it's qualified windows doors, skylights are manufactured and qualified by an Energy Star partner. They are individually tested and certified by the NFRC ratings and that meet energy efficiency guidelines and set by the U.S. Department of Energy.